Good afternoon, I'm Malcolm Jordan and this is your Midday News Fix for Thursday the 29th of February. A number of fuel stations around the country are being affected by technical issues believed to be due to a leap year glitch. Allied, Waitomo and Gull are among those affected. Gull spokesperson Julian Lays says the issue relates to a payment provider used by multiple fuel brands. Waitomo group owner Jimmy Ormsby says the provider didn't account for February 29, but they're working on a solution and alternative forms of payment are still available. Our commercial customers who have a Waitomo card will still be able to transact and also our customers that have downloaded um, the Waitomo app, they are also able to transact as well. An Auckland man who killed his former boxing trainer, then tried to blame his friend, has been sentenced to life with a non-parole period of 17 years. Sean Hayde appeared in the Auckland High Court this morning after he was found guilty last year of killing Wiramu Arapo nearly four years ago. He was also found guilty of perverting the course of justice by setting fire to Arapo's flat and of a brutal assault on his ex-partner, for which he was on bail at the time of the murder. The Crown says the killing was the result of a tangled web of jealousy, infidelity and resentment. Frustration and concern as experts aren't given the opportunity to contend with smoke-free law repeals. The smoke-free amendment bill was passed through the House just before midnight under urgency. Te Pāti Māori MP Debbie Narewa Packer says the support of experts who work with the communities most at risk is not there. She cites the petition submitted by Hapai Te Hoora that received 47,000 signatures across public health professionals and organisations. If we are going to use these positions of influence to ignore that, then what else are we going to ignore going down the track? The Reserve Bank Governor struck a dovish tone when speaking to MPs this morning. Adrian Orr was fronted up to the Finance Select Committee after his decision to keep the official cash rate on hold at 5.5%. He told MPs the uncertain global economic environment was a factor when assessing the OCR. Orr says there was no discussion of cutting the interest rate, but there was some debate around if the OCR should be hiked. News Hub's imminent closure has highlighted major concerns around the future of the media industry, particularly for Māori. The loss of the news media giant has sparked conversations about future government strategies for media. Māori Journalists Association co-chair Marnie Dunlop says going forward, any discussions around solutions should include Māori. Specifically with a treaty focus and with Māori um, in, in mind and being a part of those discussions is key to better reflecting the diversity of Aotearoa and, and its narratives. Plenty of tears and laughs are expected at today's funeral for Fa'anana Efeso Collins. A public celebration of the life of the Green MP and former Auckland councillor is being held at Monaco's Dewdrop Event Centre. To sport, New Zealand captain Tim Salvey has won the toss and opted to field in the opening cricket test against Australia at Wellington. The hosts have opted for the pace of Scott Kugeline over the spin of Mitchell Santner, meaning they have a four-prong right-arm attack. Chelsea, Manchester United, Liverpool and Wolves have punched their tickets through to the quarterfinals of English football's FA Cup. And rugby league boss Peter Volandis believes the prospect of adding a South Island-based NRL team is real should the competition increase to 20 teams. I'm Malcolm Jordan. That's your latest news fix. We'll be back with the next update at 5pm from the News Talk ZB Newsroom.